Hello Seesaw teachers, this is Marie Henderson and I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to create a Seesaw activity with the new platform that's been released. So I'm going to go here to the plus sign in the top right corner. I am logged in here to my teacher account and I'm going to click browse activity library and then navigate to my library and you'll notice an icon here that allows me to create a new activity. So I click the blue plus sign for create a new activity. I give my new activity a name. I'm going to do a branches of government card sort here. And since every activity begins with the student tapping add, the Seesaw icon shortcuts menu is available and you can scroll through there to get your labels to show up appropriately. So they need to start by tapping add and then they're going to move the text labels to the correct columns for each branch of government. Those are the instructions, pretty simple. Last but not least they will tap the check to turn in their work. So now I need to create a template for this card sort so that they'll be able to do that work in their accounts. So down here at the bottom I'm going to click Add Template for Student Resource and this is going to be a drawing. So I click on Drawing and you'll see some of the new features here that Seesaw has recently added. So to begin with I need three columns to represent my three columns of government. Down here in the bottom left there are three dots and one of the options there in the three dots is shapes. So I can draw my columns here with the bar shape that is available. So I have kind of a line and that will create a top for my card sort. And then I need some columns. So again, I need some now vertical lines. And I can rotate the bar to make vertical lines and then I won't be too picky about this for the moment. I can drag it longer and then I can duplicate it so that I can have two columns. Sorry, so that I can have three columns. So here in the three dots I can click duplicate and then drag this one over maybe get a decent amount of spacing here so that we have three columns and then I can label each of my columns with the text feature. So I click the T for text and we need the judicial branch and we can drag it larger, just click outside of the box to get the sizing buttons to reappear. So we've got the judicial branch and then I want to duplicate that and drag it over here so we have the legislative branch and we can again drag that larger and then duplicate it a third time and we'll make our heading for the executive branch. Now I have the headings for my columns and I need the cards themselves for the students to sort. So the process is much the same, but I'm going to make my labels a little bit smaller and I'm going to change the color so you can tell the difference between these and the headings that I used. So my first word maybe that I'm going to use in this card sort might be Senate. And so again, if I click outside of my box, the features show back up. So I'm going to make these a colored box. Maybe we'll make them red, very patriotic. And I'm going to make them smaller so that more of them fit on my screen. So I'm going to pause my video now and work to make all these labels. And then I'll come back in and show you how to finish up the process. Okay, so now all my labels are made, and I do have them all currently in the correct columns, but for the purposes of my students completing this sort, I'm going to drag them all down here to the bottom, and we want to kind of mix them around, of course, 
so that students don't have all the answers before they even start. So we're going to drag them around. Of course, the students will be able to unstack them using this move tool that they'll have in on their side as well. So put them all down here and that way they'll be ready for the students to use as they demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of the three branches of government. Once I've done that, I'm going to check the green check mark here in the top right corner and Seesaw is going to save that as my template. So when I scroll down here a little bit, you can see a little thumbnail of the work I just completed. All right. Again, just like with an activity that I edit, I can add voice instructions or multimedia instructions, and that's sometimes helpful to students as they complete their work. So now I've created my activity. I can click Save, and it's going to show up here in my activity library, and I can then share it with my students. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks, and have a great day.